and good afternoon to anyone who has joined us early. Uh, I started the broadcast a few minutes early to get folks online with us, acclimated. So if you are just joining, definitely say hi in the comments section. Tell us, hi, Emily. <laughs> Say hi in the comment section and let us know where you are um, Facebook from. So yeah, definitely send a shout out. Um, hello, Sandy. Good to see you. <laughs> These are my friends joining early. So nice of you. Thank you so much. Great to see everybody. Emily calling from the UK. Or are you here? No, you can't be here. You can't be. I bet you're in. Sandy's one of my top fans. That's pretty exciting. <laughs> Donald is on. Great to see you, Donald. Who else is joining? Um, I see a number of people on right now. Definitely let me know where you are um, Facebooking from. Hi, Jillian in Canada. Great to see you. So good to see our Canadian friends. I'm just like, always, always, always love to see our Canadian friends. And Sandy is in from sunny Florida. That is pretty awesome. I have to sort of re keep remembering to scroll up so I can see the comments. Um, but we're about at one o'clock. If if you haven't just checked in and told us told me where you're um, zooming from, uh, facebooking from, just let me know. Hi Cheryl, also from Florida. Good to see you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So. Um, Welcome to News and Views, Mini News and Views. Um, it's sort of like the year-end edition uh, of 2020, and this is sort of the trend in the miniatures world version of Mini News and Views. Uh, I'm going to take you through the biggest events, activities, happenings, the things that made news in the mini world, and uh, it's sort of like a, a trend report, if you will. Um, but before I do that, I'll just let you know the comment section is open. Please let me know what you what you're thinking, where you are, uh, where you are Facebooking from. Hi, Wendy. I would love to hear your feedback. Um, live feedback is great, and questions are good too. I'll be taking questions if I can. I usually do these mini news and views uh, are usually about a half hour long, but I think we're going to go a little longer tonight be today because uh, there's a there's been a lot going on in the mini world this past year. Um, and I'm going to go through it. So I don't want to leave anything out of this sort of recap. Uh, so we might go a little longer than my usual half hour, but stick with it or, you know, we'll replay it later. Um, but before I even get into the trend report, uh, just want to remind everybody I'm doing a, uh, a small talk history of miniatures lecture. This is a pay for webinar that's tomorrow, which is Sunday, January 3rd at 4 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to put a link in the comment section if you want to register and join this is sort of a uh, literally a history of miniatures i take you through you know miniatures throughout the centuries all the way up to the modern era uh, when i when miniatures are enjoying this pop culture phenomenon of success so this is for anybody who you know you're seasoned miniaturist or you're new to miniatures and you want to learn about how we got here to this great big world of miniatures so join this lecture uh, join us for this lecture um, and um, and you'll learn about miniatures. So small talk, history of miniatures tomorrow. Links in the bio. And I do want to shout out to Donald for uh, uh, for uh, handling all the technology in the comments and and putting all the links. So as I go through all of the reporting, I'm gonna add uh, Donald's gonna add the links so that you can go read up further on what's happening uh, in the mini world. So with that, I will go get right into it. So these are the top moments. In the mini world for 2020, um, I'm going to start with sort of like a media report, like talk about how miniatures have gone uh, into the mainstream media in terms of reporting. There are a number of major publications that have done uh, reporting on miniatures, including um, the Wall Street Journal earlier in January of last year. Uh, we're already in 2021. Uh, the Wall Street Journal did a whole report on the scale model craze. I'm going to put that in the box in the chat box if you want to read about that. The New York Times also did a report calling uh, miniatures a mini like sort of like the Renaissance, but a mini version of it, which is kind of cool. Um, that was in March. Uh, and all and, and, and all of these, uh, these news reports have really nice um, uh, photo albums. So you can see additional photos, so it's really cool. So definitely click on it if you're interested in it. 
Um, so Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Architectural Digest in July of, the, of last year did a beautiful report on Diorama Dollhouse, which it's just another way of saying dollhouse. And they did a beautiful story on, on a beautiful dollhouse and interior design. And I think we actually have a photograph. We'll, we'll link to the, to the report in Architectural Digest, but we'll also um, send through one of the images from that report, which is really just a beautifully created interior design of this dollhouse that Architectural Digest um, reported on. Yahoo in September, Yahoo News, uh, did a report on the fact that miniatures are having a mini moment, which is kind of cool. Sort of ties into what what the other mainstream media reports have been saying, is that there is sort of this renaissance happening in the miniatures world. Miniatures are emerging. They have, you know, this sort of uh, confirms my observation that miniatures have arrived as a pop culture phenomenon here, at least in the U.S. and maybe some other parts of the world. And then finally, at the very end of the year of this of last year, and, and maybe even on the first, I'm not sure if the report came out on the first or the 31st, but either way, uh, a popular science magazine has called 2020 the year of miniatures, which is kind of cool. Um, they talk about, they sort of focus in a little bit on the psychology of miniatures and why they have merged this year as so popular. And it has a lot to do with control over our environment, um, you know, thinking about what's happening in the world of, of health and COVID and, and sort of our, our need for hobbies and need for uh, a claim on something that we can control. So that's actually a really super article. I, we, we posted that in, the, in there too. Um, so definitely look for that. Uh, but that's really tons of mainstream media, high quality mainstream media, uh, reporting on miniatures and sort of like making their mark today which is kind of cool and I love to see that. And, and it just reinforces my, my theory and my observation about miniatures into moving into the pop, uh, pop, um, pop culture like phenomenal success. If you guys have seen anything that um, my, I might have missed, anything significant, definitely pop it in the, in the box. Um, I mean, I try to scour the world of news to look for um, nuggets and, and articles like this, so, but I don't see everything. So if you see something, Definitely pop it in the box and um, and we'll look at it. Um, but not only has miniatures been seen in mainstream print media, um, but clearly, uh, you know, social media is is a really great way that miniatures have been driven into this pop culture success. Um, print and social media has picked up on on miniatures. There's actually a new podcast about miniatures, and I, I wish I, I knew the la young lady's name who's, who's running it, but anyway, the name of the podcast is called Mic Drop Miniatures. Um, look for that, she's doing a podcast, she's interviewing miniaturists, which is kinda cool. Um, you know, they're, they're short podcasts, and there's a different topic, and they're a different person that she interviews on each. Um, it's very sweet, and very cool, and you know, it's, 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 it's another way of learning about miniatures, and um, getting involved in the category, and and keeping familiar on what's going on. Shrunk Magazine, I, I, had a, uh, I had the editor and the creator of Shrunk Magazine on one of my Meet the Miniaturists interviews earlier this year, um, but that's something to look at, the fact that we had this year a, the launch of a, of a print publication about miniatures, which is kind of cool. Um, and, and so look for that, Shrunk, Shrunk Magazine. Sh there's a digital form of it available. And, uh, and it's my understanding that she's going to be doing another, uh, another edition of Shrunk Magazine. She's working on another one. We weren't sure if it's going to happen, but um, it, it seems like it is in the works, and she's been looking for editors and contributors. So definitely look for that. Mm. This, this past year, another trend that I saw happening was, you know, around social media was the, emerging, the emergence of, of miniatures in the TikTok world. So if you're not connected to TikTok, you don't have that app, uh, don't get it because it's totally addicting. <laughs> but but there are miniatures and miniaturists who are gravitating towards uh, TikTok as an app to, you know, to display their, their craft, to display their skills um, in really artful ways. So I will say uh, definitely one of the trends in 2020 has been this takeover of TikTok of miniaturists. I, of course, I would want many, many, many more. I think this is just the beginning of this movement of folks going over to TikTok and, and sharing miniatures. 
Um, it's really just a taste, but it is something that I saw see happening. And then uh, one of my all-time favorite miniaturists in the world, Bill Robertson. Uh, the big news there in 2020 was that Bill Robertson, if you don't know who he is, he is an awesome master miniaturist. He has um, joined Instagram. And that's big news because, you know, he hasn't really been tapped too much into social media over the last several years or ever. And the fact that he's on Instagram is awesome, not only to see his work, but um, he's an amazing storyteller. So you don't just get posts from Bill Robertson about with pretty pictures. He goes into detail about, about his work, about how he arrives at his work. He has great stories around his work. So he's definitely one to follow if you guys are on Instagram. If you're not, this is a good excuse to get on Instagram because, uh, like I said, Bill Robertson is on Instagram, and you got to be there. Um, and then, I mean, I think I'm going to mention Meet the Miniaturist and my own series uh, as, as sort of one of the drivers in 2020 of, of, of miniatures sort of having their moment. Um, I think I had uh, close to 20 interviews over – the 2020, I'm calling it season one of Meet the Miniaturist, where, um, and I'm, I'm totally excited now for 2021 uh, for, for season two of Meet the Miniaturist, but, uh, you know, this is just another sort of way that I think miniatures are, is evolving uh, into all these other platforms and ways of communicating and sharing knowledge and, and, and between miniaturists and creators and all that and just so you know um i have a, a i have a whole calendar in january this this month of miniatures miniaturists that i'm planning to uh interview for meet the miniaturist so definitely um if you're not follow if you don't have a subscription of my my newsletter that i do on my d thomas by miniature page definitely go and join and sign up so that you get the updates so that you know when they're happening when these meet the miniaturists are happening uh, and um, my advice is register and sign on and get on early. I've been averaging about a hundred people on these uh, on these episodes, and my cap is a hundred on on the plan that I have for for Zoom. So, and I'm not ready to expand that. But if I see that I'm getting more than a hundred, I will definitely expand. But for now, I would recommend registering, getting on early, um, so you don't lose the space and. Um, We'll definitely look to upgrading as uh, as as I monitor the attendance. Pretty good. I'm really excited by by um, by what's happening with that with that series that I'm doing. Um, I'm gonna just see if there are any questions before I move on. Thank you, Wendy, for your comment about my webinars. I'm glad you are enjoying them. And as always, I'm always uh, looking for feedback. I'm always looking for tips on who you think I should be interviewing, and Yes, Connie. Connie's talking about the fact that recent commercials are using miniatures too. I'm going to get to that. There's definitely a trend in miniatures in advertising, and I'm going to talk to that a bit. Um, and so, okay, with that, I will go on. Actually, my next topic is miniatures on TV and film. Uh, we saw a couple of things um, in terms of, of programming involving miniatures. I don't know if you guys saw this, but a very uh, popular show on Netflix, I think it's on is called Knives Out, featuring a whole bunch of celebrities. But anyway, the star, at least in my mind, of that series, Knives Out, is a, um, a dollhouse cabinet um, that it's actually it's really not a dollhouse cabinet, but it is a piece of furniture that they reworked into a dollhouse and it became a liquor cabinet that's featured in, in many of the scenes on the show. We're going to put a link in so that you can go read up about it. It's, the, the, the article that we're going to link to is more about the set designer who incorporated that dollhouse cabinet into uh, the set design for the show and um, why he did it. And, you know, but, but it's definitely an example of, you know, sort of dollhouses being in top of mind for some of the producers or set designers and decorators out there um, to use them in, in, in film and TV. There was, I don't know if some of you folks out of the UK are familiar with the Midsommar Murders. It's, it's a show that's been on forever, but they dedicated an entire episode, um, and they called it the, the Miniature Murders. And it's about, you know, this collector, and they, uh, a miniatures collector, and she's featured in the show, and it's a lot of drama. But again, the, the 
the definitely the star of the show are the miniatures in the in in the show. So look for that. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the tiny chef. I mean, it's a little outside the scope of uh, what I would call fine miniatures. It's more fun, uh, but the tiny chef which is an animated series uh, about a tiny chef <laughs> that, um, but the tiny chef is getting its own show on Nickelodeon. So that's big news. Look for that. If you're interested, it's a little more, more geared towards kids, but definitely, you know, it's miniatures and they're high quality miniatures. I mean, the animation that is featured um, with the tiny chef is, um, it's really good stuff. Um, earlier in 2020, around April, I learned that there was a new show coming called tiny food bite. Okay, um, I mean, I, I put it on this list, but honestly, I have not heard anything more. It sounds like they announced that it was happening, but it didn't actually happen, or maybe it's not happening until 2021. But essentially, well, with COVID and everything, a lot of things were announced and they're not happening because production couldn't happen. But, um, but look for Tiny Food Fight. It's essentially a cooking show in miniature. So the, it's a competition show to make the best miniature food, you know, with bite size, you know, great bite size miniatures. It's kind of cool, kind of cute, kind of interesting. And then of course, finally, mm, excuse me while I hydrate. Um, if you guys are just joining, definitely, um, I see a whole bunch of people just join. Pop in the comment section where you are joining from, because I love to know where everybody is joining from. And then finally, big plug for myself is, <laughs> is the, the, the biggest, thing that happened, I think, in the miniatures world in 2020 was the Biggest Little Christmas Showdown, which was an entire reality-based competitive show about making miniatures. Um, I was on the show. I don't know if you know that. I was on the first episode. Uh, no, I was on the second episode, sorry, with my partner, May Burnett, and we competed against several other teams. We won our episode. We moved on to the finale. We did not win the finale, uh, but we were very happy with our work. Um, we're going to pop a link in the comments section if you want to look at what we created, if you want to learn a little bit more about the show. It's on HGTV. I think you can, you can if you get HGTV, you can go and watch it. Um, you know, it's still up, but I, you have to you have to sort of buy into a cable, into the cable channel. But look for that. Hi, Judy. Good to see you. And hi, Megan from Stroudsburg. Great to see everybody. Hey, Oklahoma. Hey, Mark. Good to see everybody. Um, so lots of miniatures on TV and in film represented well, I think, not only sort of, you know, as about uh, folks, uh, about uh, fun, folksy, and crafty, but, you know, a little bit, but with a little bit more sophistication um, that I think miniatures deserves. Hi, Kathy. Good to see you. Yes, Connie. Um, Father Brown. Yes, Father Brown had an episode involving miniatures. I'm going to have to look for that. And I'm going to get to the haunting of the Bly House in a second. But thanks for putting that in there. Oh, and CSI did. You're right. Thank you, Connie. Connie has to know it. You know it. Hey, Benny. How are you in Stanford? Good to see you. Um, yes, I did. I mentioned Shrunk already, Kathy. Um, and yeah, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, miniatures also was represented in 2020 in fashion, in music, and interior design. And some of the highlights around that includes the fact that Dior, the house of Dior, uh, created a beautiful short film to help promote their line of um, couture and their clothing and everything else um, with this beautiful short film featuring miniatures. Definitely straddled the line of dolls and, you know, doll furniture, but there was an, a, a gorgeous dollhouse, a uh, humongous dollhouse in the film that was just so beautiful. And the way it was filmed was beautiful. And the designer and the deck, the um, the director of the film is a famous Italian director. So it was done beautifully, as you would expect Dior would do. Uh, but but miniatures were definitely represented there. Miniatures also made it to the runway. Um, there was a mini folding chair by a company called Area A R E A uh, in a runway show in February. So it was. I don't have. I don't think I have a picture of it. I don't think I do. But oh no, we have a link to it. But essentially, it was is one of those metal folding chairs around the neck of one of the models on the runway. It was kind of cool. And then finally, uh, the uh, rap group, I don't know if rap, it's like rap jazz. They're pretty awesome. Uh, the name of the, the group is Disclosure, and they released a call, of, uh, their, they released a song called Birthday, and the video that was used to, um, for, the, for the music 
had miniatures throughout. So I'm going to put that in the um, in the chat box if you want to see that. Really, really well done. Uh, a lot there was CGI in it, but there were also miniatures used in it. So it was really, really well done and creatively uh, incorporated miniatures into the telling of the story around this uh, this song birthday. Uh, and then finally, um, well, not really finally, but I'm not done with like fashion and music. There is a design house out of Portugal called Joanna Arana Studios. And uh, their Portuguese team, I think it's a mother-daughter team, and they did a beautiful, also did a beautiful short film, which incorporated this beautiful dollhouse in the forest being discovered upon by a, a, a trio of muses, just beautifully done. Uh, if you didn't know about that, we're gonna put that in the, in the comment box, but definitely look for that. And finally, I think um, one of the other big runway uh, shows incorporating miniatures was Moschino. I think that's how you say it. M-O-S-C-H-I-N-O -S out of Italy, I believe. Did a runway show featuring marionettes. Also going to put that link in there. It's kind of awesome how, uh, for me, honestly, it's not necessarily about the marionettes, but it was all the miniature sets that they created uh, to create the environment around these marionettes. But the marionettes are awesome. The fashion on the marionettes is beautiful. Um, and all of the marionettes they created, which are icons in the fashion world, like Anna Wintour, um, and all these other really great, iconic fashion people were made into these puppets. But again, for me, it was all about the miniatures. So look for that, that was big news. So there was a lot a lot of big news in the, in the fashion world around miniatures. Um, cool stuff. Um, and then in advertising, to your point, Connie, there's definitely a lot of um, miniatures being used in advertising this year. Um, VW out of um, out of Australia did a whole campaign around the smallest dealership in the world, the smallest VW dealership, and they did a beautiful job creating a miniature um, car dealership. And then they shot it beautifully on the beach and with water in the background. Definitely a must see there. This relates to fashion to some extent, but Hermes uh, did a beautiful stop motion uh, advertisement to uh, talk about the Kelly bag and the popularity of the Kelly bag and how it is made and how beautifully it's made. But um, again, it, it straddles the world of animation and cartoon, but they're miniatures. And that's what's so freaking great about it. So I, lo I really encourage you to go link, check, check out the link to that. Um, and then on a more commercial level, uh, Fruit of the Loom, Men's Underwear, uh, did a whole campaign called Tiny Doors. And basically, they did, it was more of a digital campaign online where they created these elaborate tiny sets around in, in cities with tiny doors. And they encouraged folks to go and, and, and find the doors and discover what's behind the doors. And uh, I think there was a prize behind the doors. But anyway, again, I just love the tiny doors. So go, go look for that. Um, we'll put the link in there from Ed Week. But yeah, um, Benny, I'm going to just take a couple of questions before I move on. Uh, insurance ad on TV. Yes, Benny, I think it's um, Farmers Insurance is doing uh, a whole series of, of, of miniatures in some of their, in their campaign. But look for that. Um, but yeah, 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 definitely. And then finally, House Beautiful, uh, the media, the, the, the magazine, the media company from Condé Nast did a whole series of called Dollhouse Beautiful. It was an 11 part series that included 11 different interior designers taking on a dollhouse project. And uh, every week you got a different interior designer and a different dollhouse. And you got to see all these different perspectives of how these interior designers would put together these um, these dollhouses and everyone got the same dollhouse basically a farmer uh, you know a, a farmhouse everybody worked with the same template but it was amazing to see what what um, what each designer did to decorate and design the interiors and the exterior of this dollhouse so it's kind of a great series you know when you have time just go through all of them what I found amazing was just the different interpretations and the different levels of skill that each interior designer brought to the table, some better than others, and some, you know, some really, really out there and creative, and then some really, really conservative. Uh, but definitely, it was interesting to watch all of them. Yes, Mark, Paytonville, Allstate, Allstate. Thank you. So yes, it's Allstate is the insurance company that uh, did a whole series 
around um, using miniatures. I think it was mostly model railroad scale, um, but still, miniatures in mainstream advertising is kind of cool. Um, but before I actually go on to more of the trends, I did want to take a moment to remember some of the folks that we actually lost last year, and 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 this was mainly um, the the. the you know, we lost Carol and Barry Kay in 2020, early on in the COVID pandemic. So if, if you guys don't know who they are, Carol Kay built a beautiful museum of miniatures in L.A. Um, she was very well known for that museum. It's not around anymore, but she was um, uh, definitely a contributor and a benefactor and a supporter of the miniature arts. And she actually she had a museum and she her and her husband of many, many years together have passed. And it was a really, really sad, sad moment for the miniatures world. Um, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to recognize them and recognize that. That was a sad, sad um, event in 2020. Um, in terms of, of other sort of losses, we, we lost the Roadside America. I don't know if you guys are, are know about Roadside America. It's this huge miniature sort of wonderland in Pennsylvania. And after many, many years, um, they have decided to close down. And that's always very, very sad to hear um, because they've been around forever and um, a big contribution to the miniature world. So we're sad to see that happen. But in terms of some of the bigger trends in the mini world, uh, one of the biggest things I think I discovered, mm, excuse me again while I drink, uh, as, as, a, as, a, as a bigger trend is this whole idea of dollhouse renovations. Now, yes, over the years, they, you know, we know that people get dollhouses and they renovate them and that's a thing. But this year it sort of went mainstream, I think, in a lot of ways. Um, a couple of reports that, that I, I think highlight that is um, there was a UCP, United Cerebral Palsy, United Cerebral Palsy Benefit, in, um, uh, I want to say it's Hunts, Huntsville, Alabama. And they got 15 different businesses together to each take on a dollhouse renovation project and all the dollhouses were then donated to United Cerebral Palsy, which I thought was really, really cool. Uh, also, there was a husband and wife team out of the UK, Scarlett and Ben, and uh, Scarlett actually has a an Instagram account called Weston Road Renovation on TikTok, but they're also on Instagram. And they embarked on a full-size, their home renovation, and while this was happening, she decided to make a dollhouse that represented this, her, her bigger house. She's awesome. I'm going to have her on my Meet the Miniatures, so look for that. I haven't scheduled it yet, but she was awesome. she's awesome to chat with, and I can't wait to have her on, so look for her. Um, yeah, she, she, I don't think she ever made a dollhouse before, but then she, she did. And then finally, uh, I met, I met, I, I discovered a gentleman, I think he's also out of Pennsylvania. His name, he goes by the name of Barely Monroe. And he is a self-described, I don't know, it, he had a funny name for himself. I'm not going to remember it, so I'm not going to say it. But he essentially uh, decided to, you know, acquire several dollhouses and he's been renovating them. Um, and he's quite a character. I'm also planning to have him on Meet the Miniature. So details to follow. But I think the bigger story here is that there are folks, and I think COVID probably has a lot to do with it. People have more time on their hands. Um, they're looking for something to do. So, uh, you know, there are a lot of folks who are taking on these major projects. And it, and I think more dollhouses are becoming available. So whether they've been, you know, either in, in a garage or in a basement, people are discovering them. They don't want to throw them out. So they're, they're becoming available for folks to find and discover and take on as a project. So I think that's happening more and more. And I think that was one of the things that I, I noticed this year. In terms of other trends, I think the whole idea of the tiny terror and the haunted dollhouse continues. It's it's I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's continuing. It's a continuing trend because we're still seeing it happen so much. Uh, one of the first examples is um, ID Vice out of the UK, which so they do trend reports as well, mostly around the art world, uh, fashion world. They did a whole piece on haunted dollhouses on TikTok, so there's a lot of that happening on TikTok. Um, our own my own badass miniaturist, Julie Steele. I don't know if you, you guys remember her from Badass or if you even remember Badass. She did a beautiful piece um, for Badass Miniatures. But they featured her on Messy Nessie Sheep, which is another sort of trend report uh, blog. Um, they did a report on her. 
And then finally, to Connie's point about the haunting of Bly Manor, which is a popular show on Netflix. Uh, in within the show, there is this extensive dollhouse that is sort of like, you know, a main character. I haven't seen the show. I just have seen the dollhouse. <laughs> I love it. But um, just capitalizing on that tiny trend, the tiny terror trend of using dollhouses as um, as vehicles to drive messages around, you know, hauntings and dollhouse terror and all that. We also saw a lot in 2020 around uh, in, in museums and museum activity. Uh, a couple of things to mention, the Bine Art Gallery, I'm not sure where they are actually. Um, but anyway, they did a whole, uh, 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 they did a whole installation around miniature structures. Uh, that was around in February of 2020. Karen Collins, who is a miniaturist in the LA area, um, showcased her uh, dioramas and vignettes and room boxes around Black History Month. So she's done dozens of, of dollhouse and room boxes um, celebrating Black history. So that was in February, that was another featured report about miniatures and museums and exhibitions. And then finally, more recently, there was the Stettheimer Dollhouse Up Close exhibition at the Museum of the City of New York. Um, look for that. I actually went to that. I'm going to do a special Meet the Miniaturist on it and report on my my experience and my observations around that dollhouse. It's, it's way cooler than you would think, and people don't know about it, and more people should, which is why I'm going to do a report on it. So look for that. And then um, finally, uh, if you guys know of the Nostel Priory dollhouse in the UK, that was renovated over to, to over 2020 and maybe even be prior to that um, and it is a beautiful dollhouse on permanent exhibition there through the national trust in the uk so look for that as a major sort of mini museum happening i also noticed that miniatures have gone to the streets they've been taken to the streets in 2020 like i haven't seen before um you know we've seen tiny doors gone to the streets um, as a way of, of, of having miniatures get discovered in some beautiful you know, way. But uh, it's actually grown, I think, over 2020 in the sense that um, not only is there the sense of discovery around finding miniatures on exhibition in the streets, uh, but, um, but, they're, but, but the exhibitions have grown. They're more extensive. So I'm going to call out one thing, which is May Burnett, who was my partner, so May May Burnett was my partner in uh, Biggest Little Christmas, Biggest Little Christmas Showdown, but she did this awesome uh, exhibition of miniatures on this walking path in uh, in the Hudson Valley on the Aqueduct Trail, which is a state landmark. And I'm going to put the link in there. We're having a little bit of a of a technology delay, but um, we'll get those links posted in there. But she did a gallery on 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 this walking path in the Hudson Valley of of miniatures and the theme was quarantini obviously with covid um i there was also another tiny dwellings exhibition along a similar trail in the hudson valley um philadelphia the philadelphia there is a group called the philadelphia outdoor museum obviously in philadelphia that stages exhibitions of miniatures against again in a way of discovering miniatures and uh to finding finding it i'm just gonna take a second if you guys wouldn't mind, would somebody pop a comment in the section just to let me know that that's working? For some reason, I'm feeling like the comment section is not working. And I just want to make sure that it's... So, pop it in there if you wouldn't mind. Maybe not. Or raise your hands that you can hear me. I just want to make sure you guys can hear me. Or maybe the comment section is just not working. Okay, I'm going to continue for the next few minutes and just hope it comes back up. Um, so I mentioned, oh, there it is. Thank you, Wendy. Got, got it. Um, yeah, I'll take, I guess I'll take a question. This will be a nice break before I move on. Would love to see a webinar featuring miniatures that makes miniatures into everyday items. That's a great point. Um, I, I think that's a great idea. I think there are a couple of miniaturists that I'm looking at. And, you know, I, one of the themes around Meet the Miniaturists that I do is open studio. So that's a great way to incorporate, um, 
making miniatures from everyday items into the open studio event. But yeah, that's a great idea. Thank you. Hi, Shannon in Wichita, and thank you for Rachel for um, commenting that you can hear me. So um, I also saw this year um, that uh, the mini museum concept has gone online. So there are a couple of examples of that. Um, there's the San Francisco State University Martin Wong Gallery, which was an opportunity for the students at the university because they usually have uh, they have an actual gallery where the, the art students display their works. But because of COVID, they had to go small. So, but it was a great opportunity to challenge students to work at a much smaller scale. But then they created a tiny miniature gallery to house the tiny art. Um, so we're going to put a link in there for that. Um, there was also one of probably the more extensive galleries in miniature that happened in 2020 was the Shelter in Place Gallery. Crazy. Amazing. Excuse me. Gallery in miniature with tons and tons of activity. I think he, he updates um, this. Um, I think he updates the gallery ex like weekly almost. So there's new art every week. And it's varied in terms of the uh, uh, in terms of the content and the design so it moves from modern to contemporary to you know really really out there to mid-century so it's a little bit of everything um, and I love it shelter in place gallery look for that um, but we also saw uh, a lot of activity around sales of, of miniatures so a couple of things I want to highlight in terms of sales of miniatures the first is the Hewitt Clark sale, and th again, this is more of, you know, dollhouse or dolls. But the she, this was a very recluse, reclusive um, a collector, uh, and the her estate went up for sale in in I think in December, um, and it was a big event. It the the numbers were really really high in terms of the sales, um, and it's definitely a um, you know something to look for in terms of the sales of sales of miniatures. Another one, another really big sale was Queen Mary's Dolls House tableware went on auction. Uh, this was not a, it, this was an original tableware set that was made from the T, oh gosh, I'm going to mess up the name of the company. Anyway, I'm not going to say it because I'm going to mess it up. But one of the companies that were commissioned by Queen Mary to create a tableware set, it's a 70 piece set. The company actually created two sets, which is a smart thing to do. Um, and one of and, and their their extra set which didn't go into the dollhouse went on sale. So that was big news, and they're expecting it to to great to make like forty thousand uh, dollars at auction. I wouldn't uh, I couldn't go on it and not mention the celebrities that have been associated with miniatures in twenty twenty, and I love when I read stories about about celebrities who are involved in the miniatures world. It's just always 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 fun. Um. But the first one is Demi Moore because, I mean, I always knew she was into dolls and miniatures, but there was a TikTok that she posted this year where she was dancing in her kitchen with um, with her ex-husband. What's his name? I'm blanking on his name. Um, <laughs> he's famous too. I'm blanking on his name. But uh, Bruce Willis. Bruce, Bruce, Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis. Okay. And in the background of this TikTok of them dancing and celebrating, I think they were celebrating a holiday, I'm not sure which. In the background is a, a wall of tiny chairs that are on display in her kitchen. So whoosh, I was like, this is amazing. So that was sort of a celebrity in the news kind of report. Britney Spears apparently is into tiny sofas. I don't know what that's about, but uh, BuzzFeed captured that in a report in 2020. And um, you can see these tiny chairs, tiny sofas strewn about in places like her gym, where she works out in her home, because who doesn't have a home gym to work out in? Um, but she's got a tiny couch fetish or something. And then finally, I want to mention that John Cena, the, the, the Worldwide Wrestling Federation John Cena, is captured in a, um, in a video, and he is making tiny food with... Craig Robinson, another celebrity. I'm not sure who he is, but just I just love it when uh, when we get to see celebrities playing quote unquote with miniatures. A couple of other like honorable mentions. I want to 
uh, call out is, uh, and it's happening a lot on TikTok, but there are skateboarders in miniature who skateboard around places. <laughs> So yeah, there was yeah. So we're we're posting in the in the in the comment section now some of the, the previous things I just mentioned, but skateboarders, on you know skateboarding with their fingers, I don't know why they're miniature. It just makes me it just it just makes me excited. Um, and then uh, also honorable mention are and I don't have clips of these. That's why uh, I'm just gonna have to just mention it. The other is again they're finger dancers. And there is a finger dan There are several finger dancers who create these finger dances with crazy tiny shoes and elaborate costumes on their fingers. Look for that. It's off. It's awesome. It's crazy. And then finally, um, and I've seen more. We, we we always knew animals and miniatures gone together. You know, there are hamsters and squirrels, but I'm seeing so many more of them in 2020 this incorporation of tiny animals and miniatures i'm seeing them everywhere um, but definitely something to look out for so 2020 has been a great year for miniatures we're everywhere miniatures are everywhere i see them everywhere i know i look for them everywhere so i probably find them everywhere which is probably the reason but i statistically i am seeing them more and more and i don't know what you guys are seeing but if there's any sort of uh, bigger trends that I might have missed in the miniatures world, definitely pop it in in the comment section because, you know, I love, I don't want to miss anything. So if there's something you're seeing that I'm not, definitely pop it in and, and let me know. Um, and also, is there something that you're, that you want to see on an upcoming Meet the Miniaturist? Definitely pop that in as we sort of wind down this uh, mini news and views year end uh, episode. But, um, Definitely, we'll want to take a few more questions before I before I sign off. Um, I hope the volume is better. I'm talking a little bit louder. I hope that is happening. That is better for you guys. But if you have any, if you don't have any more questions, definitely, um, uh, I am accessible. You can always uh, send me a note if you have any questions. Uh, but uh, I just want to thank you guys for joining today for this very special uh, news and views holiday edition. All right. So enjoy your day, everybody, and I will see you soon. Bye.